joining us now, possibly with some more insight, is former IDF spokesperson and Lieutenant Colonel Jonathan Conricus. He's now senior fellow at the Foundation for Defense of Democracies. That's a nonpartisan institute focusing on national security and foreign policy. Great to have you on the show uh, again. Uh, the United Nations Security Council said today, quote, or yesterday, quote, now is the time for maximum restraint. The United States, Britain, France, all condemned the Iranian attack over the weekend, but also called out for Israel not to retaliate. Yet the Israeli War Cabinet announced late today it will be. It will be retaliating. Is Israel really going to go it alone? Hi. Good evening. Thank you for having me. Um, you know, I, I, it's very difficult to take serious anybody saying Israel uh, be happy with the fact that you were able to defend yourself with the help of others as well and uh, don't strike back against an attack of this magnitude. I can understand and appreciate that countries far away who do not have their civilians within the crosshairs of Iranian terrorists would say that. But for Israelis, I don't think that that really is an option. In our area of the world, the Middle East, the rules of engagement are very clear. If you are attacked, you must retaliate. If you do not retaliate, you invite additional attacks. And that is something that I think Israel does not have the leisure of doing. Uh, so what I think will happen here is that Israel will answer in a... Israel will, first of all, uh, be restrained, and it will take its time. This won't be any rash decision where Israel will lash out and use its significant military power in order to strike random targets, but rather a systematic approach towards Iran's ability to continue to fund and to equip terror organizations in the Middle East. Okay, so because there's reporting that a counterstrike could happen as soon as tonight or tomorrow night. Yes, there is reporting. I've seen those reports as well. I don't know how credible they are. Lots of speculations, lots of people voicing their opinions and, uh, and uh, what they think will happen. Bottom line is that uh, hopefully we won't know before the first bombs hit the ground. All right, and so then what, we can start what, talking about this. Uh, would Israel attack Iran directly? I think uh, that there's a very high probability for it, yes. Israel was attacked directly by Iran uh, from Iranian soil at Israeli soil. And I think that there's a symbolism that is important here. Uh, you know, Iran has been attacking Israel indirectly for decades. And for the last six months, Israel has been suffering from attacks from two of Iran's most important proxies, Hamas in Gaza and Hezbollah in Lebanon. So. Being attacked from, from Iran isn't a new experience for Israeli civilians or the Israeli military. But What's is new is that now... Right, but if Israel attacks Iran directly, isn't Israel risking a wider war in the Mideast? Well, I actually think that if Israel doesn't strike back at Iran and if Israel doesn't send a very clear message to Iran that this aggression will not stand. I think that Israel will be inviting more and more attacks like this. And that is something that I think after October the 7th, Israel cannot tolerate. And I don't think that anybody can demand that of Israel. You said yesterday that Israel would retaliate, quote, in a smart way and coordinate with the United States. The United States is saying, stand down. Well, not exactly in those words, Elizabeth. The United States is saying, uh, be patient and be restrained, and uh, that the U.S. won't participate in uh, offensive activities. That is not stand down. That is, uh, be cool, but I understand that you want to do this. And a lot is happening behind closed doors behind, uh, between Washington and Jerusalem. And I think that eventually, when Israel will have its ducks in line, you will see an Israeli response against this Iranian aggression that I think will bring about substantial change to the entire Middle East, a positive change. And hopefully we will see a alliance, dare I say coalition, of like-minded countries who are sick and tired of Iranian aggression in the region. I'm sp speaking about Saudi Arabia, about Jordan, about the Emirates and other countries right. who have been suffering 
from Ira Iranian terrorism and also have an inherent interest in getting rid of this Iranian influence. Yeah, it's worth noting Jordan did open its airspace uh, to defense uh, of the Iranian attack. Iran has no friends, uh, have very few friends uh, in uh, in the Middle East. Probably its only friends are Russia and China. Uh, Lieutenant Jonathan, Jonathan Conricus, uh, great to have you on the show. I'm sure we'll be in, in touch as these next few days play out. Thanks so much for watching. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven and unbiased coverage.